Hello there, friends and neighbors. Thanks for coming again to my channel. This is me, Stella Hendricks. And I already started filming this video, and when I was about seven minutes in, I realized that I was in fact not filming this video at all. So we're gonna start again, and hopefully we're gonna do better this time. <laughs> so today is the finale for our in-depth review of The Girl in the Centerfold by Surrey Marsh. Uh, there's two chapters left, but we're gonna knock them both out today. Uh, and then we're going to get started on our next book, which I am very excited about. As always, I am only reading excerpts out of this book and offering my own personal opinions. I encourage you very much to get this book. I really enjoyed it. Uh, read it and form your own opinions for yourself. <clears throat> Chapter 13, Canned. In late summer, Louis went away on a business trip and never came back. A friend told me what had happened. I felt sorry for Louis. I didn't know what prison he was in, but wherever it was, he would hate it. But I'd like to say something about Louis. It might be called a character reference. I often asked myself what Louis saw in me. What was I to him? Until he went to prison, I didn't know. For a time, I thought I was sex to him, until I found out I wasn't. I meant fun to him, but he could have found that with almost anyone. And I was never an ornament to him, a pretty decoration on his arm. Louis never needed that. The bunny playmate thing never meant a thing to him. We never talked about it directly, but I always sensed that Louis didn't approve of my past very much. I know now that I was Louis's Sunday. I don't mean Sunday as a day of rest, but Sunday as the day one never does evil on. This Sunday can come any day or part thereof. This Sunday can last only a minute. Perhaps I'm naive, but I believe that every evil man, and Louis obviously was evil, has some kindness, generosity, goodness in him which he holds on which he holds on to to keep his self-respect. Louis didn't love me, but he was kind to me. Most of the time he was selling dope, an evil, evil thing to do. In the middle of it, he tried to help me, and he did help me. He was not all bad. He had a Sunday. Several propositions had been made to me at the club about being a model. Apparently, I was photog photogenic enough for Playboy to go through all that rigmarole. Apparently, too, I, it wasn't too difficult to be a model. You just had to get some pictures taken and then make the rounds of agencies seeking work. Uh, as I did the promotions, I realized I could handle myself in various public speaking situations. More, the Playboy promotions were already one source of employment. Thus, in June 1967, I took the big step, left the Playboy Club, and became a professional model. Without the crutch of promotions, I don't think I'd have had the guts to do it. Near the end of July, Renee called from Chicago saying that she had a promotion for me. It was to be in Bridgeport. I was to leave on Saturday morning by train. She promised to write me the details and send me the train tickets. All of this was par for the course. As the date approached for me to go to Bridgeport, something happened. Rather, nothing happened. No letter, no instructions, no tickets. I waited around Saturday. No last minute phone call, zero. I assumed the promotion had been canceled. Monday morning, I called Renee in Chicago. What happened to the Bridgeport promotion? Was it canceled? What, she shrieked, you didn't do it? God, I'd better check right away. Two days later, Renee called again. The store in Bridgeport is suing Playboy for $10,000 and it's your fault. I was canned. So we're jumping into uh, chapter 14 because we're just going to do the finale, the whole end of this book today. <sighs> chapter 14, size 5. Having described my Playboy Playmate adventures, I guess I should end the book. But more than a year has elapsed since Renee Rossini and I performed our You're Fired, No I Quit routine. And for me, it, and for me a great deal happens in a year. Nine months later, in June 1968, a friend called me into his office, told me to sit down, and spread before me a copy of Blank Magazine. There were nine black and white, full-color photographs of me, several of them nude. I went home in a state of shock. I had never seen those pictures before. I couldn't remember when they were taken. Then I knew. Jim Taylor was identified as the photographer. 
I'm not going to say anything more about this incident. I've consulted a lawyer and I am planning to bring suit against the magazine and Taylor. I never authorized those photographs. I was never paid, although Taylor sent over $100 when I called him to complain. What did I get out of being a playmate? I got $2,500. I earned the money I was being paid for being a playmate or for being a bunny and for doing the promotions. Then one day, a very nice man, I don't even remember his name, was looking at my book. She means her modeling book. He saw the centerfold and said, you'd better get rid of that. It'll do you no good. He was a knowledgeable, experienced casting director. I knew he was trying to help me and he did. I took the photo out of my book and stopped telling people I, of my Playboy Association. Unfortunately, too many people already knew of it. Being a playmate is a kiss of death. I know this is a common experience of many ex-playmates. They shed their apparel thinking they are launching a career in showbiz or modeling, that producers and agents will be knocking on their door. Playboy, Playboy maintains a fiction that playmates go on to fame and fortune. In the 15 years of skin production in Playboy, only one playmate has gone on to become a star, Stella Stevens, and she has been quoted as saying her nude photographs hurt her career. Among models, only one or two have made it. There is a top model in New York who is an ex-playmate. I don't know what the psychology is. Perhaps when men have seen a woman nude, the mystery is gone and they lose interest. I understand that the great strippers, such as Gypsy Rose Lee and Anne Corio, used to this principle never taking everything off and lasted for decades, long after their physical prime. So Mr. Hefner, get on your rotatable bed and write another installment. Tell how through your magazine and your clubs, you provide a crucible where young girls, burned to be sure, are either destroyed or remade into something of value that you can brag about. When I started this book, I said I had a personal motive, hoping that in the telling of it, I would come to understand myself and find myself. Now at the end, I don't know if that has happened. Like everyone else, I'm several people and I don't yet know them all. But I do know this, for a long time, I had something stuck in my throat. I guess you could call it a lump or maybe it was a bunny bone. Anyway, thanks to this telling, the lump is gone. Having said all this, no matter what others may think, I feel lighter and freer and I guess I'm not really a bad person. I've tried to be light and funny and good natured wherever possible. Sunny road in the middle of the city, that's me. So let's end with an appropriate thought. When I was a child, there was a moral to every story. There's a moral to this one. Your famous American writer, Mark Twain, said it many years ago. He said, clothes make the man. Naked people have little or no influence on society. Believe me, believe me, I wear size five. The end. So that magazine that her uh, news were published in that she never approved of or whatever, that's Penthouse Magazine. And I do not know uh, whatever came of that legal action. If she ever uh, went through with it, if she was, if she dropped the suit, if she was ever paid for it. I honestly, I have no idea. No idea at all. She uses a different name also uh, in Penthouse. And yeah, I don't, I honestly don't know how any of that came about, but I feel so bad for her. Gee. What a rough time, Suri. I really wish that uh, she could have a different mentality and feel better about herself because I truly don't think she's not a bad person at all. She hasn't done anything worthy of derision. And while it is true, I think that uh, that kiss of death from Playboy is, uh, it, it becomes a stumbling block, yeah, for many aspiring actresses. Holly Madison and others have talked about that too. I think that is real and that should be addressed and people should be made aware of that, you know, what, what they're getting into when they uh, post nude and stuff like that. But also that attitude is wrong. <laughs> that these girls should not be shamed for posing nude. It's not something bad, it's something brave and beautiful. And I think we should normalize it, we should praise it. We shouldn't demonize it and write all these silly, morality tales about it. I guess every story does have a bit of a, of a moral to it, doesn't it? And I learned a lot of really good things out of here too. I agree with her on a lot of different points, if not all of them. So that is very interesting. I really liked that book. I would highly recommend it to anyone and everyone. What a fascinating tale. It really is kind of like 
the original uh, down the rabbit hole. And I am amazed that uh, I'm a big uh, Playboy fan, Girls Next Door fan. Um, and I spent a long time searching, you know, for books like down the rabbit hole. After I read that one, boy, I just couldn't get enough. And I read pretty much everything I could get my hands on that involved anything with Playboy, like uh, Shannon Tweed's uh, book, um, Kiss and Tell, which is a wonderful name for her book. And I, it took me a while to come across this one, but it's one of the most interesting, uh, one of the most conflicting, like, yeah, I would say, yeah, because of the nature of not knowing how willing she was in writing it or in putting it out there. I don't know. It's so, it's so interesting. You definitely have to read it. You definitely have to get it. It's going to be great. So our next book that we're going to read, I'm super excited, is going to be the showgirl next door by holly madison and i am extra excited about this one because it is talking a lot about las vegas and her recommendations for las vegas anyone who's watched my channel knows i am obsessed with las vegas and i lived there for a little while so i'll be able to add a little bit of my personal experience to the reviewing of this next book as well well, thank you so much, everyone who has gone on this journey with me. Uh, this has been really, really interesting and I appreciate you all and I'm excited to start on our next adventure. So don't do anything I wouldn't do and I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>